joining me now in the E90 3 Series BMW. It's been one week since I posted the video on fixing the oil leak and we've got another problem. Something that we haven't come across before. We must have had every type of common fault on this car by now. Yesterday, I'm driving as you do in a car. Suddenly the power's cut to the rear wheels, like the traction controls come on lately. There wasn't any traction control lights on the dash. Didn't think anything of it, drove on, and then it started happening a lot more. And laser lights came on the dash, traction control lights did come on this time, and the engine management light. Plugged in the diagnostic code reader, and this code comes up, which says it's to do with the crank position sensor. So, as well as all those lights coming on, it's showing all the symptoms of a crank sensor fault. When I was revving above 3000 revs, just all the power would go and the revs would drop until it got below 3000 revs and then it would pick up again. You'd get some stuttering, like when the power's cut to the wheels of the traction control system working. Just out on the road test, I was hoping to recreate the fault, I'll show you the lights on the dash, but the car's not going to play ball today. Without doing any thorough kind of diagnostics, I've ordered a crank sensor. Today I'm going to fit that. I've seen videos where people have done the crank sensor by taking the inlet manifold out, but I've also seen videos where they have gone from underneath. The crank sensor is under the starter motor, which isn't the easiest of places to get to. So if I can, I'm going to do it. Go to the garage. First thing we've got to do is take off the under tray so we can see up to hopefully where the starter motor is. What I love about this car is that anytime you work on it, if it's on the top, you've got to take the scuttle panel off, and if it's from the bottom, you've got to do the under tray. But that's what we're faced with, so let's go. Got a load of 8mm bolts like this holding the tray in. I won't show you them all, you've seen them in the previous video. Link in the top right corner. Okay, so I'm under the car. There's our old fancy oil level sensor. I can just move you up the side of the engine. I think that's the crank sensor in there. I can take my old friend's scuttle panel off just to give me a bit more visibility from the top. Possible to see hardly anything down there. You can just about make out where the starter motor is, but you certainly can't see the crank sensor. So unfortunately, I think that's going to mean intake manifold off. It's not a waste of your time and get on with it. I've got some instructions that I'm going to follow for this, but first thing to do is going to be remove the air intake box. And for that, we're going to remove the torque screws there. One's missing from there because it snapped a while ago. Some 10 mils there. Clip around the intake piping there, math sensor plug, and then that should come out. Here we're struggling with the math sensor plug, so I take the airbox apart for better access. Okay, so back underneath the car, there's the oil level sensor for reference point. So we need to undo this oil drain pipe here and then we need to undo the Torx bolt there, just about to see the edge of it. Clipping that oil drain pipe is actually more accessible from the top here. Got that pipe off there, I thought that was going to be really difficult to get off because when you squeeze the clips either side of the pipe here it feels like there's no movement, but I managed to get another hand on the rest of the pipe and just pull it off. Here's the Torx bolt that I need to do from underneath. Okay, so the next step is to do the Torx bolt on the other side of that bracket, which we can get to going in around this kind of area under the throttle body around the alternator. 
just about see it there. Now we're going to undo the battery terminal lines, which I've done many times before, and get this out of the way. And next is to disconnect with the wiring harness that attaches to the intake manifold. So we're looking at things like the throttle body here, whatever that is, this, this, that rubber connector there, for starters, and then we'll see what's left. I've undone a few plugs. Next, I'm gonna try and get the fuel rail off. There's a valve here, which is supposed to release the fuel pressure. So I'm going to push that in, see what happens. Okay, let's release some fuel. And then there's a connector down here, there. And I believe you push in the plastic and push down and hopefully it pops out. Check it out, sat in the engine. Just wanted to show you that fuel pipe. Has it gone? There it is. So what did I do? I pushed it up into the metal pipe so I could push this plastic down and then just pull it out. Next for the fuel rail, we've got two 10 mils either side and then hopefully it should wiggle out. It also appears to be these which clip the injector to the fuel rail for a vasing to come out. So there also appears to be two 10 mils right down there. So those need to come out and then all of this bracket can come off, which would have made things a bit easier. So let's do that. They're actually 11 mil, unusual. Got the retaining bracket out of the way. I'm now struggling to get the fuel rail up. We do have these cable ties holding the wires in place here. Hoping this plastic will just slide off. Okay, so I've slid a screwdriver down the side there and just given it a gentle lever and it has actually just popped off. I've got the injectors loose. This will come out together the fuel rail with the injector. I did need to use a little bit of gentle persuasion with this. I was leaning on that bolt from this end. So not to lean on any plastic and crack it. There we go. I'm expecting that there's six bolts holding in the inlet manifold, one there. The one there, which was a nut for the retaining bracket I've already done. And then that one, and then the same again on the other side, the one there, the one down there, maybe. And then again, the retaining nut. First obvious obstacle that's stopping me getting this manifold out was this pipe here. In there there are some tabs, so I just got a little pick in there and pushed them towards the outside and gently levered the pipe up from here and then it popped out quite easily. The next bit is I've done these rubber clips for the wiring there. But there's also this one down here, 
I'm thinking if I just undo these two torx bolts, that'll undo that whole bracket. Next thing is this oil drain pipe here. Right, so I've got the inlet manifold in this position, which has opened up a hole down here. I don't think I'm far away from getting the manifold completely off the car. Really, it's these wires getting across there, stopping me now, rather than faff around more with that, because I've opened up this hole. You can now see the crank sensor in there so i'm gonna try and get it out with the gap that i currently have to so just show you how i'm trying to get this plug out there's really not a lot of room in there between the starter and the plug you can see i've wedged a pick in to push the clip in on the side that is harder to get to so hopefully i can then push the other side and pull the clip out that's the plan anyway this off. Next is behind the crank sensor is a bolt. What kind of bolt? It's a 5mm Allen key. Hopefully you can see that I've got a socket in there. Ready to get the ratchet on. Got the bolt out. With a wiggle, there's the crank sensor out. You should just be able to see down there the hole where the crank sensor comes out of. Here's my new crank sensor. My RX7. So we'll just grease the seal a bit and then put that into place. Right, new one's in there. Just put a dab of Loctite in the bolt there. Now we'll get back in with the bolt. Put the 5mm bolt back on and then just need to put the plug on like so. And now put all this mess back together. progress being made. We've got the fuel rail back in. You may have seen from the footage that I put the nuts that go down there in before this retaining bracket so I had to take them out again. But that's all bolted in. We've got various plugs back in. We've still got to do the bolts that go up to secure the inlet manifold to the bracket down there. We've got the fuel to connect, don't want to forget to do that. Where's the car going to start and there'll be fuel everywhere. Right, let's go back underneath the car and do the other side. And the only other thing to do down here is this oil drain pipe. That's on. The other thing to do underneath is the under tray. But whilst I'm under here and I've got the tray off, I'm going to make a bit, a bit of a spray of the old brake cleaner following the oil leak of the last video. Right, let's put the top of that together. Last but not least, let's reconnect the battery. Which I should have said earlier, I disconnected. Due to these wires being unbolted from here earlier, so fucking around causing sparkage. Let's see if it starts after all of that. I wouldn't expect it to start immediately because we've had fuel lines unplugged, so the fuel needs to prime again. So I'm just going to turn the ignition on. Wait a couple of seconds. And then 
this guy. Looks good. Let's go for a test drive. So far so good. So we need to give it a proper test. So this week I've got to drive 50 miles to work, 50 miles back again. Seems like the perfect opportunity. So the next clip I'm going to transform from my rags into a smart suit and I'll have done 100 miles in the car and I'll let you know how it's performed. It's good news, I'm well into my trip now. The car doesn't skip to beat. So that's all good. In the last video you may remember that this car was replaced by a new Vauxhall Mocha as Hannah's daily. But it had an issue with the water pump and the coolant disappearing. So we've got the car back now, I promised you a tour of the car, so let's have a look at it. Here it is, the Vauxhall Mocha. It has everything. It's got a steering wheel, front seats, back seats, four 18 inch wheels, doors, a boot. engine with a turbo, windscreen wipers, retro door locks with central locking, a manual handbrake, a manual gearbox, some needles that tell you how fast you're going, some futuristic gadgetry called Apple CarPlay which means instead of getting in your car and listening to music you've got to faff around on your phone and then tune in to the car. And the list could go on and on, but in short, it's an amazing machine. And with that, I'm going to sign off. We'll see you soon. We've got some stuff upcoming on the Astra, and also we're going to see the M3 on the channel soon for some much needed love and attention. See you then. Yeah.